Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. We're going to be talking about Shaul, Saul. Saul meets Jesus. What an awesome portion. But Saul, breathing threats and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, that if he found any who were of the way, that is, those who believed that Yeshua was the Messiah, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he traveled, he got close to Damascus, and suddenly a light from the sky shone around him. He fell on the earth and heard a voice saying to him, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? He said, Who are you, Lord? The Lord said, I am Yeshua. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now, the Textus Receptus Manuscripts adds, It's hard for you to kick against the cattle prods. But rise up and enter into the city, then you will be told what you must do. Here's an important point here, okay? Shaul, as far as we know of, never met Jesus face to face in the flesh when Jesus walked, this, walked the earth with his disciples, okay? Saul never met Jesus in the flesh, okay? But yet... Yeshua, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Remember Matthew chapter 25? Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, my brothers, you do to me. He takes it personally. When you attack the people of God, I'm talking about everybody from the guy standing on the street with a, with a sign that says repent, all the way down to these little quiet little people in different communities. When you attack somebody who belongs to Jesus, you're attacking Jesus himself. He takes it personally. He said to Paul, why do you persecute me? As far as Saul understood, he was persecuting these people called the way, or you know, these Jews that believed that Yeshua was the Messiah. He didn't really look at it as if he himself was persecuting Jesus himself. Verse 7, the men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the sound, but seeing no one. Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. They led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. He was without sight for three days and neither ate nor drank. He fasted. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He said, Behold, it's me, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise, and go to the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Yehuda, Judah, for one named Shaul, Saul, a man of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him, that he might receive his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he did to your saints at Jerusalem. Here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go your way, for he is my chosen vessel to bear my name before the nations and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias departed and entered into the house, laying his hands on him. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me that you, might, that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he received his sight. He arose and was baptized. He took food and was strengthened. Shaul, Saul, stayed several days with the disciples who were at Damascus. Now, later on in the book of Acts, Saul, Paul, was persecuted himself, and he was brought before the council. Let's read about how he put it. What does it say in his words? Now, keep in mind, I mean, the person who wrote Acts chapter 9 is the same person that wrote Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 9 talks about Paul. Acts chapter 22, it's narrated as if Paul is speaking himself. Let's go over there. Brothers and fathers, listen to the defense which I now make to you. When they heard that he, that's Paul, spoke to them in the Hebrew language, they were even more quiet. He said, I am indeed a Jew, born in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was a very well-respected and well-known rabbi at that time. 
instructed according to the strict tradition of the Torah, the law of our fathers, being zealous for God, even as you are today. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest and all the council of the elders testify. That's the Sanhedrin from whom also I received letters to the brothers and traveled to Damascus to bring them also who, who were there to Jerusalem in bonds to be punished. As I made my journey, I came close to Damascus about noon. Suddenly a great light shone around me from the sky. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you persecute. Now, one of the things I want you to notice right off the bat, and that is that the account that we have in Acts chapter 9 is different, even if slightly different than what we have in Acts chapter 22. My point is just this. A lot of Christians like to nitpick on every little word in Scripture, and they like to isolate Scriptures. I mean, be so legalistic and just, you know, hanging on every single word. But sometimes it's spoken in generalities. Like, for example, Acts chapter 9, verse 5. You know, when Jesus answered Saul, he didn't say, I am Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am Jesus, wh whom you persecute. Okay? Right here in this account, it says that Jesus said, I am Jesus of Nazareth. So it adds, of Nazareth here. So verse 9, those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they didn't understand the voice of him who spoke to me. So in, in chapter 22 here, it says they saw a light, but they didn't understand the voice. Chapter 9 says they heard, the vo they heard a sound, but they didn't see anybody. Now, you can say, and rightly so, that maybe they saw something, but they didn't see anyone in particular. They saw something, but they didn't see a man, okay? They saw a light. But notice there are subtle differences here. Now, I'm not going to go in and nitpick every little single little thing here, but you get my point, okay? When you read the scriptures, you got to read it with more of a, a broader perspective, okay? I mean, today in our legal world now that every everything's got to be defined and we got all kinds of legal contracts and everything's got to be, you know, just picked apart, nitpicking. Back in those days, it was not so much like that, okay? So they didn't write like that, okay? They, didn't, they weren't so particular about writing every single detail or being very specific or, or adding disclaimers, okay, as they are today. However, let's rejoice that we do have the story here of Saul who was called by Jesus. What a wonderful, wonderful testimony this is. And like I said before, it is an awesome thing to serve the Lord. It is an awesome thing to really seek Him, to be with Him, to walk with Him. You can't be bored. I mean, there's no vanity in the Lord. There's no emptiness in the Lord. There's always something happening in the spiritual realms. That is the awesome thing about it. So seek him while he may be found. And you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. More, may I add, than maybe even your mentors. So it's my prayer that God blesses you with great insight and enlightens the eyes of your understanding. Love you guys.